It is so rewarding to pick the ripest, freshest, juiciest fruit and transform it into a scrumptious dessert. Today on Martha Bakes, I'll share four unique mouth-watering recipes that you've probably not really seen before. A pink applesauce tart with a beautiful display of thinly sliced red-skinned apples on top. A pistachio brown butter cake with Concord grapes. An unusual cake which has a batter made with Sicilian pistachios. And beautiful pear frangipane tart. It is delectable and individual apple pies that have a surprise of pecan streusel under the top. Four delectable recipes that I know you, your family, and your guests will enjoy for years to come. Now this is one of my favorite apple tarts. It's a real showstopper too. Hidden beneath paper-thin apple slices is a rosy pink tasty applesauce filling. And if that wasn't enough, the whole tart is brushed with a red currant jelly and Calvados glaze for a spectacular finish. The whole secret of pink applesauce is the apples themselves. Choose the reddest skinned, whitest flesh apples you can find. I like to use a combination of really red Macintosh, Empire apples, which are very nice. And this is my family's favorite applesauce, by the way. To this pot, Add one and a half cups of water. And I think the secret for getting really pink applesauce out of red skinned apples is fresh squeezed lemon juice, one quarter of a cup. Turn this up and I cover it and cook until the apples are very soft. Now this is what the applesauce looks like. And the last step is passing the applesauce without the skins through a fine sieve and get one and a half cups for the tart of the pinkest applesauce you can make. So for the crust for the applesauce tart, one half of a recipe of the pot brise. Roll this to about oh, almost 13 inches in diameter so that it'll fit right in a 10 inch pan like that. And if you don't have a ruler, you can use the pan itself to sort of gauge that you have enough pastry. So see how nicely this fits right into the tart shell? This is a removable bottom tart shell. Have your oven preheated to 375 degrees. So now just let this fall over the edge like that. Now you can use your thumb and go all the way around like this, but isn't it easier just to use your rolling pin and go around like that? And the whole thing just falls right off, see? Now to blind bake it, we want to first dock it. One docks pastry so that it allows the steam to rise out of the dough. If you didn't, you might get sort of eruptions and a kind of hilly landscape instead of a nice crust that you can actually put a filling in. And now transfer the crust to the freezer for at least 15 minutes until it gets nice and cold. And we just happen to have one that's totally cold and that's what we want. Now we want to blind bake it. So I have my 10 year old kidney beans. We have all kinds of weights for pastry. They're pastry weights. Crinkle up your parchment paper and by crumpling the paper stays nice and flat right in the crust. And then pour your weights and be generous. You need weights that come pretty much up the sides. So now pop this right into a preheated 375 degree oven. Bake until the edges are set and golden about 25 minutes. Remove the beans and let it bake for about 10 minutes longer. You'll see what a great golden brown crust you get. And now for the assembling of this gorgeous tart. Two tablespoons of butter, a pinch of salt, and a quarter of a cup of granulated sugar. And we're going to heat this with one tablespoon of Calvados, which is an apple brandy from the Normandy region of France. Let this melt together. This is the flavoring for the applesauce. Add your applesauce, one and a half cups and just stir into the flavors. Very pretty. 
Now get your apples sliced. Core the apples, and I've done one of the two apples that we are going to need. Just core straight down through the core. And you can slice the apple and just start the apple until you get pretty slices. These are not nice enough, but you want a little tiny bit of the red skin around a very thin apple slice. See, we're getting the perfect slices. Pour your applesauce right into the tart shell and even it out. You can tilt it to do that. You want almost a half an inch of applesauce and then start layering your apples. You can start in the center and go around and around like this, always covering over the hole. Now this is ready to go right into a 400 degree oven. Bake until the apples are crisp tender, just about 15 minutes. And now I'm making the red currant glaze for the top. Three tablespoons of jelly and one tablespoon more of that delectable calvados. And let that cook together. And we'll see how that tart looks. And so here is our beautiful tart which will be rendered even more beautiful with this red currant glaze. Gently brush the glaze all over the surface. And this, for dessert or on a buffet table, is just so beautiful. There will be lots of oohs and ahs. It's beautiful, don't you think? You may never have thought about baking with Concord grapes, but their sweet, jammy flavor is the perfect foil to a rich pistachio brown butter cake. And just in case you can't locate Concord grapes, this cake is equally delicious made with other fruits such as raspberries or slices of peaches or plums or blueberries. The Concord grapes, we need one heaping cup and Concord grapes actually have a lot of seeds in them. So we wanna take the seeds out. You can do that just with your fingers, cutting them in half. You could use the point of a knife too. We don't wanna get rid of all the grape, so it's a little tricky. And the brown butter, well, there is a secret to browning butter. Just cook one cup of butter over medium flame until the milk solids in the butter start to turn a nutty brown color. I'm pressing out the seeds from the flesh of these grapes. You want the flesh, just not the seeds. And there we have, that's a nice heaping cup. So that's going to continue cooking, but we see this one is already done. Now strain through a very fine sieve the butter. You're not getting those dark, hard, brown bits because you are straining, and that's what you discard. And so now for the cake batter itself. It's an unusual batter. Uh, don't be surprised. This is two and three quarters cups of confectioner sugar. Mix that with three quarters of a cup of cake flour. Cake flour is a lightened flour which has cornstarch generally in it to make it lighter. And here we have three quarters of a cup, a teaspoon of salt, and the surprise one cup of pistachio flour. It can be purchased or made at home using a food processor, but you have to have really, really good unsalted pistachios. And this gets incorporated right into the sugar and the flour mixture. And add seven large egg whites. Just add that to your dry ingredients. So it's very strange. And the whole cake is going to be kind of greenish before you bake it. And now incorporate the brown butter. Just keep stirring it in. You want to get it all incorporated. And do this slowly. This is almost like a madeleine batter. So, very nice. Now, chill this batter. It can actually be made up to a week in advance. You can make the batter and bake it the day of your party. And surprise your guests with a very, very French pastry. So this gets put into the refrigerator, tightly covered with plastic wrap until it is icy cold, at least overnight. So they're nicely covered right into the fridge. So uncover your batter and put this into a well-buttered nine-inch tart pan. It's kind of a 
sticky batter. Smooth out your batter and place the Concord grapes all around the top of the cake. Don't go too close to the edge because if the Concord grape cooks into the side, it will cause the cake to stick to the ring and you wanna be able to get the cake out of the ring easily. Concord grapes are named after the Massachusetts village of Concord, where the first variety was grown. Peak season is the autumn, August to October. Now two tablespoons of Demerara brown sugar and just sprinkle this all over those soury grapes. The oven should be preheated to 350 degrees. Bake until the edges of the cake are a dark golden brown and the top is slightly springy to the touch. That takes about an hour and a quarter to an hour and a half. So the cake came nicely out of the tart pan ring, but it doesn't come off the bottom. But that's okay, serve it on that. And look how beautiful it looks. This cake is best eaten the day it's made, but it can be kept at room temperature, loosely covered with plastic for about two days. Cut into wedges. Mm, it's beautiful. And it does have that tinge of green from the pistachios. You can serve this with softly whipped cream or just by itself. Dense, tasty, crusty recipe. This easy and versatile belongs in everybody's repertoire, I think. One of the first tarts I ever made was a pear frangipani tart. It incorporates beautifully poached pears with an almond cream filling that really tastes delicious baked in a tart shell. So you start with ground almonds. Best to grind your own into an almond flour. And we need a cup of finely ground almonds. It makes a lot of noise, so bear with me. You don't want to grind it so fine that it turns into marzipan or almond paste, but you want it really, really fine because you're trying to make almost a coarse flour. I think we have it. Fine enough. I don't see any lumps of almonds. Stick your finger and hold the blade so it doesn't fall out on you. That works very nicely. So we need one cup. And I'll measure it out so that we are accurate. It should be a level cup. That's good. And now for the almond filling cream. One stick of butter, creamed with a half a cup of granulated sugar. Best to do this in a mixer like this. Really cuts down on the time it takes. When the butter and sugar are fluffy and smooth, add one large egg. And let that beat until light and creamy looking. And we have a pat brise pie crust that's frozen. That's our perfect pie crust that we make for most tarts. And now you can add one tablespoon of flour and your almonds. Incorporate one teaspoon of almond extract. Almond extract is a very strong extract and you can really overdo it. You want the flavor, but you don't want it to be too overpowering. And three tablespoons of dark rum. Rum goes really, really well with these buttery, foamy pears that we poach. Well, that looks good. I'll just remove it from the mixer and stir the rest by hand if it needs any more stirring. Right into the tart shell. This is an unbaked tart shell. So quickly spread the frangipane filling into the bottom of the tart shell, and hopefully you will have your pears already poached. At this point, because my pears are ready, preheat your oven to 425 degrees. And this is gonna go right in. So now, choose pears that are ripe. Slice the pear in half, and using a melon ball scoop, you just scoop out the core, the seeds like that, and the stem end too, which is difficult to eat. Once you've halved the pears and taken out the core, slice about an eighth of an inch thick. 
These pears have been poached in dry white wine, a little lemon juice, a little lemon zest, some sugar, a cinnamon stick, and half of a vanilla bean. And you poach the pears for about 30 minutes or until they're just soft to the point of a knife. We have six halves and just take one of the halves and you just spread it out, kind of accordion style, so that you see this beautiful line of pears. Looks very beautiful. Now this is ready to go into your preheated oven. 425 degrees for approximately 10 to 15 minutes and then reduce the oven heat to 400 and bake for another 20 to 25 minutes. So this is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. And this is the reduced poaching liquid. I like to put this right on the pears to give them an extra shine. Now paint just the pears and be generous. You wonder how the French bakers get their tarts so beautiful. Well, it's little steps like this that really make a difference in the beauty of a tart. Display your tart on a pretty pedestal like that. Let it cool a little bit before you cut it and give this timeless classic a try. Everyone will love it. Of course, you've heard the expression as American as apple pie. It's a good metaphor because apple pie has evolved as one of the most classic American desserts. Over the years, there have been many, many variations on the traditional recipe. Recently, I came across a unique version created by pastry chef Melody Farrar from the Inn at Pound Ridge. Welcome, Melody. I'm so glad you could come. Thank you for having so, me. So Melody has moved from New York City mm -hmm. up to Pound Ridge in my neighborhood. Yes. So we're, you use a food processor for yes. the pastry. Yes, and so here we have three and a half cups of flour, and we're going to add three teaspoons of sugar. Okay. So a little bit of sugar. I always put a little bit of sugar in mine, too. Mm -hmm. And salt, too? Uh, about an eighth of a teaspoon. And then half a teaspoon of baking powder. So that's different from the usual pie crust or pot brise. Mm -hmm. And the butter I keep frozen, just so it doesn't overwork the dough. This is two and a half sticks of butter. There. You just want to pulse it until the butter is the right size. I just transfer into the bowl of the mixer. And on low speed, I'm just gonna add about three quarters of a cup to a cup of buttermilk. Well, I love buttermilk, so I'm gonna use this recipe a lot. I, I like having buttermilk in my pastry. And you wanna mix it just until it's almost together. Right about here. So it doesn't look quite together yet, right. but we're gonna finish it as we put it away. So as you're putting it together. Oh, I'll do mine, okay. You wanna push it all together. Mm, it looks very good. And it looks like it will hold together when you roll it. It will. Very nice. And at this point, I kind of manhandle it a little bit just to push it together. So this looks like it's gonna roll out very nicely. And I love the big pieces of butter in it. Mm -hmm. So. Makes it so flaky. So this should chill for? About two hours. About two hours, right into the refrigerator. I am slicing six cups of honey crisp apples. Is yes. that your favorite apple for this tart? Yes, it is. It is. And uh, you want to make the sauce for the apples? Melt the butter and four also. Four tablespoons of butter. A half a cup of brown sugar? Yes. A teaspoon of vanilla. And also a half a cup of regular sugar. a teaspoon of cinnamon. And with the apples, we need to toss it with a tablespoon of lemon juice. Okay, I'll do that. Also into this mix is a quarter of a cup of heavy cream. And also flour, flour. Okay. a tablespoon plus a teaspoon. And then a pinch of salt. So the lemon juice is really for acidulation, right? It keeps mm -hmm. the apples from turning brown. Yes. But I think it also adds a nice flavor. Yes, it does. So now that this is all melted, we're ready for the apples. Oh, OK. So add your apples. Oh, it smells so good. So this cooks until the apples are tender? Apples are tender and the liquid is thick. Oh, good. OK, so while that's cooking, we'll roll out the pastry. Let's see how that works. 
So these are the little individual pie plates, how cute they are. Mm -hmm. uh, do you prefer the metal? Yes. Yes. And they're making the streusel topping. Yes. Well, in, streusel inside topping. Sort of, yes. Yeah. So we have a half a cup and two tablespoons of flour. I'm going to add a tablespoon of sugar and a scant cup of pecans, rough chopped, and a tablespoon of butter. This is a very, very dry streusel. And you're just going to stir it together, break up the butter as you go. And so that gets sprinkled. You put the pie crust in. Mm -hmm. So I'll get one. These are all rolled out to mm -hmm. seven inch rounds. So you just press it in. Mm -hmm. OK. Very nice dough. And the apples are chilled. Hmm. Very nice. So is this your favorite apple pie? Yes, it is. This is what I make for my family every year. I'm going to start filling the pies with Good. The yeah. filling. You want to evenly distribute as necessary. And then to the pie filling, just about a tablespoon of the streusel. Uh huh. So that helps even more uh, thicken the thicken and sweeten and give crunch to the tart. Yes. And then just really lightly egg wash the edge with egg white. Mm-hmm. And this goes on here. Mm -hmm. And I get to see how you finish the edge. So I go around gently just to press everything together and then take scissors and just cut off the excess. Just so we have something neat to work with right, right. now. And then I go back and really pinch and seal the pie. After you really pinch and seal it, you're going to go back and trim it so it's flush with the pie mold. Oh, I see. Oh, you're taking more off. And then just crimp the edges with your thumb and your forefinger. Very pretty. I like that ruffle. Very pretty. And just like that, Very. you're ready to chill. Very beautiful. And does anything go on the crust at all for baking? Yes, we egg wash with a little more um, egg white and then sprinkle with the cinnamon sugar. And you're going to cut vents, and then into the oven it goes. Very nice. And what's the temperature? Uh, 375. For how long? For about 50 minutes, depending on your oven. Obviously, you want to keep an eye on the color of your crust. You don't want it to get too dark. And really nice golden brown is what we're aiming for. So we're going to finish uh, topping all the pies, bake them in a preheated oven, and uh, then you're going to show us how to serve them. Sure. Thank you very much. So Melody promises that these come right out of the shell. They're still warm. Oh, yes, they do. Look at that. <gasps> so pretty. Oh, don't you love it when somebody makes something of yours that works? Yes. It does. It works perfectly there. And then you top it with your ice cream? Yes, cinnamon okay, ice cream. Why don't you show us how you do it? Just a nice big scoop. Mm, by the time it gets to the table, it's a little bit melted. It's a little melted and very delicious. Well, thank you so much, Melody, for sharing this delicious recipe for apple pie with pecan streusel. And I hope you've enjoyed today's lessons, and I'll see you on the next episode of Martha Bakes. Very thinly sliced firm underripe pears lengthwise. Place in a single layer on parchment lined baking sheet. Generously brush with maple syrup. Bake at 225 degrees for one and a half hours. Turn and continue baking until slightly darkened and edges are curling. One to one and a half hours more. Let stand until cool and crisp. Serve with cheese and toasted pecans.